everyone! Thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can hook native Android methods using Frida. In a previous video, I had showed how you could hook these Java methods inside of an Android application, and if your native method is defined inside of Java as well, you can still use that Java hooking technique on the native method. However, if your native method is only defined inside of native code, you're going to need to use this special native hooking technique. So let's jump right into it. So I'm gonna pull up my sample that I'm gonna be using today, and I will share a link to this in the comments section of this video. But this has some native binaries inside of it that we're gonna be practicing hooking today. So I'm going to open this up in JDEX to start off. So I'll open up my JDEX executable. And I already have this binary downloaded, so I'm just going to throw this into JDEX. And here is our package explorer. So if I was reverse engineering this, I would start looking at the manifest and trying to get the entry point of this and analyzing. But right now I'm just interested in the native libraries that this particular sample has. I'm going to open up my resources folder and we're going to take a look at the lib folder, which has one processor architecture support for ARM64. So just a disclaimer, if you happen to be looking at this sample, then it only supports the ARM64 architecture. But I do have a previous video on how to set up an ARM VM inside of Azure, so you can run an Android emulator that will work for this processor architecture. But if we go inside of this folder, we see we have one native binary called libkc.so. .so stands for shared object, so this is going to be our native elf binary inside of this Android application. So we're going to practice hooking and looking at some of the imports and exports of this particular native binary inside of our malicious application. I'm going to bring up my terminal and I already have my Android device running inside of here and I already have my sample on this VM. So if I pull up my terminal, I have my device connected via ADB and then using screen copy to forward the screen of the device. So why don't we go ahead and actually install our malware on our emulator? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do ADB install. I think it was this ADA.apk right here. Looks good. If I check my device, yep, here's my application. It looks like they don't really have an icon for this app. Maybe that's some form of obfuscation, but it doesn't really matter. So now I want to actually start this application and connect to the running process via Frida. And just one disclaimer that I actually already have the Frida server running on this device. Um, if you want to push and run Frida, then I show how to do that exactly in my previous Frida video. Or one quick methodology that you could use is, let's see if I have it up here. You could actually use um, the Medusa container that I created a while ago in another video because that automatically pushes Frida and begins the Frida server on the target device, or else you won't actually be able to connect to the device with your Frida commands. And I'm going to get rid of that, and let's go ahead and connect Frida. So if we do Frida PS, so it's going to list all the running processes, dash U, connect via USB, you're going to see all of the different running processes that are currently on this particular device. Or I can filter by applications by running Frida PS-U and then lowercase a. And that's going to give you a more simplified view of the processes executing on this device. So if you're running an application, usually you want to do the dash UA because it's easier to find the particular application that you're looking for. But I actually don't have my app running yet because I didn't click the launcher button. So let's see, what is our package name going to look like? 
If we go to the manifest, we scroll right. Here's our package name. So remember, this is the unique identifier for this particular Android application. So we can pull this up and then I'm going to run this. And this is starting our malicious application. Yes, we definitely want to allow fake Chrome to run in the background. But if I run my Frida PS UA command again, now we see we actually have our application running. If we want to just attach to this application, which I'm going to do first because I want to list the imports and exports of our native binary, all we need to do is do Frida and then dash U because remember we need to do the USB to connect to the emulator. And I'm actually going to copy the name of this. And if that doesn't work, you might want to try using the actual identifier right here. Just try whichever one works and lets you connect, then that's the one you can use. But now I'm actually attached to our running Android process. So what I can do from here is I'm actually going to list what's part of our native binary right up here. What we can do for that, here I'll pull up the Frida documentation so you can follow along. If you ever have an issue with Frida, just look it up in the documentation. It's pretty, pretty exhaustive about the capabilities you have. But I want to actually enumerate the imports and exports that are defined inside of our native binary. So the imports of the native binary would be anything that this binary needs to run. So any libraries that it needs to import to be able to run its code. And the exports would be any native methods that it is defining inside of itself. So I'm going to do enumerate let's try exports so that's going to be our command right here and you can look and see exactly what the return value will be but let's try running this pull up my terminal how we get to it is we do module and frida is really nice because it gives you a suggestion about all of the different commands you could be typing then we'll do dot and you see it already knows what i'm going to do Enumerate exports. And then what we need to do here is we actually need to pass the name of the native binary that we're trying to enumerate the exports of. So that's going to be this libkc.so. So libkc.so. So these are going to be all of my methods that are defined inside of here. And these are the actual addresses in memory of where these particular methods have been loaded. So if we're going to hook these, then we're actually going to need the addresses of each particular method. All right, so there's quite a few methods in here, I think. Let me scroll down and show you one more quick command that you can run if you're attached to your process. You can actually do the same thing and enumerate the imports. So remember, these are going to be any of the methods that this libkc.so binary actually needs imported into it to be able to run. And here's all of the imports it needs. So you see a lot of libc imports that it's going to require to be able to run normal functions like malloc, memcopy, uh, sterlin, and stuff like that. Those should look pretty familiar with you if you're familiar with Linux. But now I'm actually going to exit out of this and I'm actually going to uninstall my application so we can start fresh because we're going to start our actual script writing process. So I'm going to do adb uninstall and then our package name. And that's going to remove this Android application from the device. And what I want to do now is I'm actually going to write a custom Frida script for this and try to hook one of the native methods inside of this binary. So I'm going to let's first look at our JDEX and pick which native binary we're going to try and hook. So just to find the native code, I'm going to do navigation, text search, and then let's do maybe load library. 
And this point is where we're actually getting this native library loaded inside of our Android application. One thing to note that's really important is if you try to hook any of the methods inside of that native binary before this load library, or maybe it called system.load instead, but before the actual native binary has been loaded into the Android runtime, you're going to get a pointer error because that actually doesn't exist. Those methods haven't been loaded. So when you're trying to hook these native methods, it's really important to get your timing right and actually hook these methods after this load library call. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll start a Frida script that's going to actually hook and see when this constructor has been called. And we're gonna call our secondary interceptor of the native code after we have actually confirmed that this Java code has been called. All right. I'm going to start my script and I'm actually going to use the script we created in the previous video or something similar to that to hook this Java class using the same methodology. But I'm not going to focus on that part because we're looking mostly at the native portion of this. So let me just steal my code from another script. We'll do cat. Um, maybe hook godfather will have something. I'm just gonna steal this code. So remember, this is our hooking a Java method. And I'm gonna create a new script. I'm gonna be using Vi, but I'll try and share all of the key bindings that I'm using. Or you can use the text editor of your choice. And I'm gonna call this, what is this called? Let's find a name. Let's just call, call this odd app. Odd app hook and we'll call this native and remember this is a javascript file so i'll do i for insert and then paste this in and now what we need to do is we actually need to change the class name and the method that we're going to be hooking so all we need to do is see the class name of this so this is going to be the actual package name plus the class name so we'll put that in right here i'm actually going to rename this as well this is going to be our odd app class and so that's our package name remember we need the fully qualified class name which is going to be the package name plus the class name which is going to be this and i'll paste that in so this is going to give us the hook to the Java class. And then if we want to actually hook the method inside of there, we need to first of all, change our class name handle to odd class. And then I'm going to pick a method. And I think I'm going to try and pick one that happens right before our native code is actually called. So now we know that the native library has been loaded but where is the actual native code inside of this? What we can do is we can actually do a search for the native keyword. Looks like there's quite a few and they're all in the same class. That's what I like to see. Nice. So this, these are all of our native methods that are gonna be defined inside of our .so binary. All right. So I think, let's see what's calling this you go up in here yeah we do import our native code so i'm gonna see if there's any references to this so we have our whoa and then looks like we're getting calls right here so we're calling all of these methods that yeah they're all native methods actually so we can pretty much hook any one of these that we want but we need to make sure it's after this Call. So this is the constructor. So this is going to run even before our onCreate method, which looks like it's calling this D method, which is then calling some different ones. Yeah, here C, and then that's going to be end up end up calling some of our native code. It looks like it's calling this pi native method. 
So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook this D method right here, since that's kind of easy to write in my code. So going back to that, since I've picked my method, all, it, all I need to do is put the method name, which is just D. So now it's defining the new implementation for this. And I'm going to delete this and just print um, we are after our native library loading, just to make sure that we've gotten to that point. And I'll just do dd to get rid of that line. Since it doesn't look like it has a return value, it's returning void. All right, that looks good. Now we have our hook for our actual Java code. So fingers crossed that this actually works and I didn't type anything wrong. Um, but we actually have to add our interception of our native binary. So I think I'm going to hook this pi method right here. So we need to use a special method that's inside of Frida, Frida called interceptor.attach to be able to intercept this native method. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to put this inside of this implementation function so that we know the load library method has already been called at this time, or else, as I said, you're going to get some sort of pointer issue. I'm going to pull up Frida. I'm going to do interceptor dot attach. And it's nice because they already have this nice code created for you. So basically all you need to do is just copy and paste and then enter your own specific methods that you want to use for this. So I'm going to actually start editing this in Notepad++ so I can easily fix my spacing, I think. So let me grab my script real quick and then we'll just paste this back inside Vim. I think it might be easier. All right, we have our java.perform for our Java code hooking. And then once that ca that's called, let's add our interceptor code. And I'll fix our spacing. So this is going to say that this is actually called, let me fix our language right here, J for JavaScript, so it's easier to read. But we also want to call the original method to make sure it's actually getting called and invoking that native Pi method. So I'm going to do this dot D. I don't think it had any parameters. Nope, didn't have any parameters. So that's just going to invoke the regular version of the D method as well. Oops. And then we're going to add our interceptor dot attach right here. Let me see if I can fix my spacing. I think I did one too many. Make this easier to read. Okay, I think that looks a lot better. So every time this actual method is hooked right here, it's also going to call this interceptor.attach code, but we don't actually want to do this because we only want to attach to this code one time. So I'm going to add a quick flag variable up here to make sure we only call this once. So let's do var. Let me fix all my spacing. Okay, just do tab to space so that it's all the same. So I'm going to do var has been called. And we'll say false. And then after this has actually run once. We're going to change this and do has been called equals true. So then the next time this runs, we already know that this method has run once before. So we actually don't want to run this interceptor.attach. And then I'm going to add an extra if statement. Remember, this is all JavaScript, so you can code this like normal. If not has been called then we're going to run 
our interceptor.attach code. Let me fix my spacing one more time. And now let's get into what this interceptor.attach code actually does. So first of all, if you remember when we enumerated the exports of this native method, we actually saw the name and address, but we also have this convenient Frida method right here that's actually going to pick the particular export that we want to hook, and it's gonna store it inside this F constant variable right here. All we need to do is, is add the name of the native binary that we're targeting which was libkc.so. So I'm going to put that in here, libkc.so. And then this is going to be the full method name of that target method. So let's see where we were. We wanted to hook this pi method, but if you're familiar with Android, it's actually not just going to be the pi name. It's going to be uh, the full actual method name in the native binary. So if we want to double check that, I can quickly throw this into Ghidra and check that target method name. So all we need to do is take our Android APK. I'm going to extract it. And here is our .so binary. And I'm going to do a new project, native Android. And I'll throw that in here. And double click. We're gonna open this up in Ghidra just so we can see the method names. And yes, we're gonna analyze it. Um, and I'll just let it go because I just want to see the method names. Now it's actually finished its loading process. So we want to go over to our functions. Let's make sure you can see that. And it's going to be in this Java underscore. So we can see all of our different methods here that we saw over inside of our Java code, but they're named with the full class name as well. So make sure you double check and you see that you've actually gotten the full class name beginning with Java underscore. So it's gonna be Java underscore the package name and underscore the package, the class name, whoa, and then underscore the actual target method name, which is pi right here. You see Java n whoa, pi. So this is gonna be the actual name of the method that we're hooking. So I'm going to copy this name and I'll paste that inside of my script. And I'm just going to do console.log. I'll just print something to the screen. So I'll just say called from native pi method. Uh oh. So this on enter is actually going to be called as soon as our native method actually enters. So this is really useful if you want to print the arguments to that or manipulate them somehow. We also have another method called on leave, but I'm just going to show you how to actually attach to this native method in this video. And then in a future one, I'll get into how we can do a little bit more of the manipulation there. So I think that this probably looks good. I hope if I've typed everything right. So the interceptor.attach is going to attach to our native method. This on enter is going to get called when we've actually done the attaching. And then it should print this to the screen. You could either use the send command or console.log, but either one of them will print to the screen. And this flag variable right here will make sure that we haven't actually had our interceptor.attach call happen before. And then remember our Java code is actually gonna make sure that this interceptor.attach runs after the actual loading of the native binary into the Android application. So fingers crossed, let's try this out and see if it works. So 
So I'm just gonna take this. I was lame and I did this in Notepad++. So I'm just gonna use DD to get rid of all my lines. Paste this in. All right, that looks good. Colon WQ after you hit escape to save your file. Let's make sure it worked. Looks good. And now we're going to actually run this application with Frida and run it with our script so that we're hooking that native method when it runs. Since if you tried to run this script after running it, this code is probably already run, so you're going to miss it. So you're actually not going to be able to hook any of the native code. All right, so the command, let me see. I think I already had this running, so I'm going to do... Um, actually, no, I'll just get rid of this. Now we're going to actually install our application and start it with Frida so that we can hook that native method. So I'm going to do adb install because I uninstalled it up here because I wanted to start fresh. Dot dot slash samples was ada something. Looks good. Now we have our application installed again and reset. And now we can use Frida dash u for USB dash f since we're going to force the package to actually start. We need to pass the package name of this application, which was this right here. So that's our package name. And then we want to pass dash L, which is going to be the name of the free script that we've already written. And that's going to be this odd app hook native. Oh, I spelled hook really funny. Oh, well. And I'll pass that. So that means this is going to be run as soon as we've actually started our application. So we should be able to hook any of this native code right here. And what we expect to happen again is we just expect to see this console.log because that's how we know that this was actually called and we successfully hooked it properly. Okay. Here we go. It looks like. We did have our actual Java code call. So we have this after native library loading, but it looks like it didn't actually call our interceptor dot attach. That's interesting. I wonder why. Let me see if I wrote something incorrectly. I figured out what was wrong. We actually need to call this method after we've actually attached to our native method because we haven't run our interceptor code, but we're actually running this D method, which calls the pi method before we've actually used our interceptor.attach. So don't worry, anything like this. It's just good practice. So we will put this down here. So now we'll do call original method after attaching native. Let me fix our spacing here. Okay, so now we will attach, attach to our Java method. In our implementation, we will attach to our native method with our interceptor.attach. We'll say that we've already called it before, and then we'll actually call the original Java implementation of this D method. So I'm going to copy this, update my script. I'm just going to make a new one by, what did we call this? Uh, odd app two hook native. And we'll paste that in. And I'm going to fix my spacing because I don't like that. Oh, I'm already in insert mode. There we go. That looks like our good spacing. Escape colon WQ to save. And now let's try this one more time. So I've already reset my, my application reinstalled on the device. 
let's try this one more time. So again, Frida dash U dash F, our package name. And then dash L, the name of our script, which we just created once more. And let's try this one more time. Here we go. So called from native pi method. So this actually ran when our native pi method was called. So we have successfully hooked this native method. And from here, we could do a bunch of different manipulation inside of Frida. But again, I'll get into that more in another video. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this tutorial, I showed you how we could hook native methods using Frida. So what we did is we made sure that the actual native binary had been loaded into the Android runtime by first using the regular java.use to find the class name of the Java method that's actually loading the native binary. Then I showed you how we can use the interceptor.attach method to actually attach to the native code after we've made sure our native code has been loaded. I also showed you how we could enumerate the imports and exports of the native binary while the application was running. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Okay. This better be five star. Are you kidding? I missed two percent. That's terrible. I would say that's a pretty good burger. Hey.